Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while and we're gonna be recording much more in the future. So let's go. Uh, the Olympiad is over, uh, all these kinds of vacations, leagues, uh, European Club Cup, everything. So it's time to record once again. Today's video is about the uh, Czech Beards. Uh, how do you actually get this opening? I really have to show that one to you. So when you play e4, d6, usually and immediately most of these guys will tell you it's Beards. Well, after d4, knight f6, knight c3, Beards is if they play and if they go with g6, then it's Beards. If they go with e5, then it's modern Philidor. And you can find lots of videos about both on the channel. But I've never done anything against c6. c6 looks like a random move. Uh, okay, they are just doing something. Maybe they want to do some b5. Maybe they want to do some queen c7. But there are certain ideas you definitely have to be familiar with when it comes to check periods. So when they go with c6, you gotta, I mean, you gotta go. I'm going to teach you what I think and what I believe is the best for white. And it's the line with f4. I really enjoy this one. In my opinion, uh, it really looks good, powerful, with a strong connected center. So it's looking nice. And when you play f4 to go with uh, e5, I just have to explain you what are the points of blacks playing the check periods. Queen a5. What's the purpose of this queen a5? Well, with f4, we've just avoided all kinds of e5 ideas by black. And now uh, they can't play e5 so easily because we're simply going to take. So they have to play queen a5. By bringing that queen to a5, they first of all threaten to take on e4. Second thing, the queen on a5 moved from all these kinds of ideas, d takes, d takes, queen d8. And finally, when they go with e5, uh, they're just going to break in the center thanks to the queen on a5. That's why we have to consider check beards a very solid opening for black. And I can tell from my experience and practice that it could be pretty annoying uh, unless you're familiar and know what you're doing. So let's go. You just have to play bishop to d3, defending on e4 and developing another piece. Uh, they have to go with e5 because that's the point of the queen on uh, a5 to support that e5 and then you just have a pretty much cool game. So when they play e5, you just want to go with knight f3. Uh, the point of knight f3 is just to control, to defend uh, center, defend the pawn on d4 and that's the way it is. Now they have three kinds of moves. Bishop g4, e takes d4 and knight bd7. In case they go with e takes d4. For example, there was an FM from my city. Uh, he was a younger guy who actually had lots of good results with the check beards with black. But then one day, I just had to play against him against this e takes d4 and he played this queen b6 line against me. I was very surprised. I moved the knight in the first game. In another game, played bishop e3 where he captured and b2. And then I came back home. Uh, I just, I, I actually, to be honest with you, I always improved the most when I used to go to the chess club uh, when I was younger, of course. Uh, if someone beats me up, then I go back home, check the lines, and then check what to do. Now you don't have to do it. You just have to go to my channel and see what to do. So uh, here you go with bishop e2. That's the that's the move to defend the knight on d4. Uh, it's a little bit illogical, like I just developed that bishop to d3 and I'm going it back on e2. Well, you just defend uh, knight on d4. Second thing, you control g4 better. And after they play bishop e7, castles, castles, watch out whenever you see like kinds of x-rays against your king move your king and put it into safety so you shouldn't be any you know like any worried uh, about anything afterwards uh, here i found a game with a rookie eight but i just want to tell you that a simple developing move like knight bd7 doesn't seem to be working because of nice move knight f5 
I found a few games where Black played Rookie 8 uh, in order to uh, go after the e4 pawn and uh, simply uh, to make a retreating square in case we don't take, but we won't take. We play bishop f3 over protecting e4 and after queen c7, uh, because queen wants there, wants maybe b5, wants to of course control d6 as well, because after we played bishop f3 and defended on e4, we in some points even threatened to take here, we just go with g4. This g4 wants to support g5 ideas. Uh, the knight has, at the moment, he has no squares. So they even have to worry about that one. White has devastating attack. After like king h1, rook e8. Let me just show you my uh, novelty here. It's e5. Uh, I played already two blitz games, very easy wins. When they capture, I simply drive the knight away. And when that happens, the key moment of the analysis comes now with the bishop h5 because it's not about threatening on f7 but actually it is with tempo it's more like bringing the queen on f3 all together with rook and going after f7 it's completely winning and white is uh, winning in the situation so all things considered that sixth move he takes d4 simply doesn't seem to work uh, from another point of view they can go with knight bd7 where they lock the light square bishop and that is not so challenging for us we go castles bishop e7 king h1 put the king in safety please don't forget about that one and now the key moment of this variation and what to do comes now so what do you have to do in this position uh, there are so many moves and possibilities but i believe that the best one is the following one with queen e1 you move your queen all the way to e1 and now um, looks like you would like to over support e4 uh, bring your queen on g3 onto the king's side but basically you want to threaten knight d5 and in case they take on e1 for example what are you threatening if they go like this you play knight d5 now they cannot take the knight because the queen is hanging and if they take the queen then you first give check and win a piece that actually means that they will have to bring the queen back but then when you take the bishop you just want the bishop here in a fairly easy and open game and all you have to do is to attack them and kill them so after knight bd7 castles bishop e7 king h1 queen e1 they all realize how dangerous is queen c7 and go back with the queen on c7 i played so many games like this and here nobody played the following move uh, so it's a novelty for you and just like you see uh, we're beginning with some novelties on the channel so you just go with g4 it's a crazy strong move uh, there is a nice idea behind this g4 i know this type of ideas g4 in some sort of sicilian shavening and ideas and here you just go with g4 sacking that pawn so if they take on f4 you just bring your queen on h4 and threaten g5 uh, also take a look at the bishop on d3 and that lethal attack on the king side if they just go with he takes d4 you just play knight takes d4 now you want to jump with the knight on f5 now you want to play here now you want to bring your queen somewhere and just to do the pawn storm and to attack just everything and finally when they take on g4 uh, this is exactly what the point of this opening is we first take on e5 so uh, we're going to kind of lock the center i'll show you why so they will never be able to take on d4 and take e file and uh, rook e8 and pressure against the e4 pawn so that's why you take on e5 and now you play rook g1 and whether they go with knight d on f6 you lock the center they go with knight g on f6 you play queen h4 lock the center and now you have all you know like systems ready to simply mate them and you have the open g file it's a very nice novelty with g4 and hopefully uh, you're just going to have like the same positive experience just like me and finally if bishop g4 that's the main move uh, by pinning the knight on f3 they also uh, kind of pressure the pawn on d4 we play bishop to e3 we have to defend it knight bd7 castles castles and here there are so many possibilities and moves but i like the following one uh, you know what now it, uh, there is not that good point of having the queen on e1 because they won't go for a castle they will take on f3 then they will bring the queen back and somehow they can take on d4 and f4 and uh, in practice 
it didn't turn out to be that effective. You just have to go with h3. That's very important. So now you're willing, if they take, to take by queen, but a little bit more about this position because the main position a little bit later. What happens if some players against me did the bishop h5? Uh, don't, don't think you can win the piece. You cannot because when you play g4, they just first take on f4 important intermediary move and bring the bishop back and now they will play castle place the rook on e8 and they will even have pressure against the e4 pawn so watch out don't fall for that you play queen e1 message is clear you can't play castle because of famous knight e5 uh, this kinds of idea repeat in sicilians actually repeats everywhere so don't forget about it the queen on a5 is undefended if they take on e1 you take the piece if they take the knight you take the queen if they move back you just win the bishop here and then after knight h4 uh, bishop is kind of stranded on h5 you want to play g4 f5 uh, you want to jump with the knight on f5 you get a bishop here you have queen g3 possibilities they are completely lost so they have to go with bishop f3 rook f3 castles in here i just have to give you a plan nothing else put the king in safety rely on the bishop pair and go with the pawn storm g4 uh, even knight e2 knight g3 ideas but first move the queen onto the king side possibly eight, uh, h4 with the idea g5 or g3 uh, depends uh, and afterwards bring rook from a1 to g1 and do the attack so this is what i'm telling you play this possibly this one but before that move the queen on h4 and move this rook and do the pawn storm and the attack on the king side and finally uh, once again let's go to the main line so check peers you play f4 queen a5 threatening e4 bishop d3 defending e5 breaking in the center knight f3 bishop g4 pinning and uh, threatening on d4 bishop e3 to defend it knight bd7 completing development and playing a very very important ninth move h3 win the bishop pair here when you take by queen i found hundreds of games uh, played like this and you have to know the plan no it's not enough to know uh, only this. You got to know the plan. Without a plan, you're nothing. You're a patser without anything. You're just playing from move to move and you won't be able to do anything. So remember plan. Find the plan, guys, and rely on plans in your games. Without remembering those kinds of things, you're nothing. You're just a miserable guy who tries to play chess with no results. So 92 why i want to solidify my pawn structure with c3 that's one thing and another thing i'm bringing my knight to g3 but maybe first i want to go with g4 so basically any c5 i'm just going to be uh, hyper solid with c3 but in case they go rook, rook to e8 hyper solid reaction and uh, solidifying the pawns uh, uh, chain in the center with c3 bishop f8 and once again like in previous position we did d takes e5 followed by f5 here we won't do this because they will have bishop c5 and ideas like that here we'll play f takes e5 to open the f file for our actions and da -da -da -da, g4 so you want to play g5 go after the f7 pawn they gotta stop it and you say he won't stop it big Maya is gonna chase you buddy uh, till I tear you apart so basically you just go with h4 g5 and go after the f7 pawn now they had you have to take you you take like this and uh I found a game where the guy played here b4 uh, actually even though I'm uh, claiming that this is my idea it happened once in um, correspondence game but I just have to be honest and to say that I had this idea way before that so basically you just go with bishop f4 because you want to avoid c takes d4 knight c5 with tempo they take you go g5 they take and here boom uh, boom shakalaka you open up the king you open up the light squares you create so many weaknesses queen h3 threatening this knight going with bishop e5 to go with the knight on f4 repositioning that bishop to the light square and the diagonal a to g8 and they're just about to resign the game uh, under such a big uh, and such a nice attack by black hope that you enjoyed in the lecture uh, once again welcome back to the channel tell your friends about it or you just want to keep it as a secret i know um, i'm going to record much more i'm uh, coming back on chess.com after years because 
I didn't have time to record any Blitz games. So believe it or not, Blitz games are coming. Uh, also some uh, speed, uh, speed runs. So it's gonna be much more content and it's gonna be way better in the future. All the best guys and see you next time.